Think of the archetypal children's question. I don't mean, can I have some chocolate? I mean the why question the children always ask. Chances are the first thing you'll think of is, Mummy, why is the sky blue? There's something rather comforting in the thought of children across continents and cultures and throughout the long stretch of human history, all united in asking the same question in every generation afresh. There may be an unimaginably wide gulf between the world of today's children and the world of those born, say, 3,000 years ago. In the millennia that separate us, science and technology have transformed our intellectual horizons and almost every aspect of daily life beyond all recognition. But if in this great sea of change we could pick just one haven of stability, one aspect of life that must have remained exactly the same since time immemorial, then it would surely be the pleasure in the rich colours of nature. The blue of sky and sea, the glowing red of dawn, the green of fresh leaves. If there's one phrase that represents a rock of stability in the flux of human experience, then surely it would be that timeless question, why is the sky blue? Or would it? 150 years ago, a famous British Prime Minister, who also happened to be an un underrated scholar, made an amazing discovery through his close reading of Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. Not only did Homer never call the sky blue, he didn't even have a word for the colour blue at all. And he lacked words for some other colours that we consider entirely basic. Although these findings were first greeted with disbelief, it soon transpired that ancient texts from many other cultures lacked some basic colour words as well. And then it emerged that there are even many societies whose languages have no word for blue even today. So when anthropologists ask people in various parts of the world what the colour of the sky is, they actually say black or sometimes green. Can such people not see blue? Or if they can, how can they manage without a word for it? The discovery that the blueness of the sky is really a newcomer on the scene of human history started an epic controversy about language and perception which after 150 years still shows no signs of abating. My recent book, Through the Language Glass, opens with this controversy and goes on to explore the relationship between language and culture and the effects of our language on our thoughts and perceptions.